Today was a pretty crazy day for internet users with Amazon Web Services experiencing a massive outage that affected tons of different websites all across the web. This affected so many different websites across the internet in a bunch of different ways. Things like the New York Times, Snapchat, Signal, Perplexity AI, Slack, and even parts of Reddit were down. And folks, even though this wasn't really anything more than a technical glitch, in my opinion, it is more than that. It's a wake up call. Because with an extremely centralized internet like we have here in 2025, when one big company like this sneezes, the whole internet catches a cold. If you don't know me, I'm Spencer and I like to talk about simple living, frugality, and digital minimalism. Let's get into this. So this has been a pretty crazy day for the internet. What really happened here? Well, surprise, surprise, folks. Amazon, the company who is in almost everything, is the world's largest cloud provider. By the cloud, I don't mean the things up in the sky. I mean the place that you send your photos to when you take a picture and you back it up elsewhere. But the cloud is more than that to more people than just you. The cloud is where all of the internet is backed up in different servers all around the world remotely. Many other big tech companies have their hands in this thing as well, Google being one of the other big players, but Amazon is the largest of them all, accounting for 30% of all of the sector. Many people woke up this morning to go to one of their regular websites and they found that it was completely down. Like I said, this didn't just affect Amazon, even though Amazon and Alexa were both down as well. This spread across the entire internet and affected so many different companies, even some that you wouldn't have expected. A couple of the ones that got my attention were things like Ring. Now Ring is the big internet doorbell provider where you're able to record and do all this stuff from your doorbell and look at it on your phone. That's that kind of security peace of mind thing that people install one of those in the first place. To have that down, that doesn't seem very good. More troubling to me though was Wealth Simple here in Canada. Now Wealth Simple is the website that I choose to do all of my investing through and I'm not alone. Many people in Canada choose Wealth Simple as their place to invest. But more than that, because of the great deals that Wealth Simple offers, a lot of people have moved over there to using them as their primary bank. When I signed into the site this morning, I was met with some notifications that AWS was having some disruptions and that as a result, you may have issues on the site. And issues I did have. My balance wasn't loading. I couldn't look up any other companies on the site the whole thing was basically broken now that was fine for me because I bank elsewhere and I also keep some cash in the house for emergencies but for anybody who had put all their eggs into that basket that's scary. And on the entertainment front, a lot of video games were affected as well. Things like Fortnite were completely down. And in these moments where we can really see the fragility of the internet, where one single company, a big one at that though, comes down and takes so many other companies with them, we really start to see the issue with number one, a few companies owning almost everything and handling almost everything in our lives. Centralized power, let's call it. And number two, all of our lives being online. All of our lives being tied to this internet that can be taken down when one company goes down. That is so fragile. Now listen, I'm not super old, but I do remember the web 1.0 days of the internet. And back then, the internet was meant to be kind of more of a decentralized thing. That was the original idea going back to way before that even. At the time in web 1.0, a lot more people were also hosting their own platforms as well. It wasn't all just centralized to these few companies like Amazon, doing 30% of all of the stuff on the net. But now folks, a handful of companies, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they control almost everything. Like a lot of things, we have traded our independence for convenience and that is fragile. When just one of these giants fail, millions of people suddenly lose access to what are now basic parts of their everyday lives. When servers like this are all centralized to just a few companies that are at the very top, there's a lot more risk of things like censorship or surveillance or just complete shutdowns. And in my opinion, this goes beyond just servers as well. This goes to media. This goes to the way that we interact with our lives and the fact that we're funneling our entire lives through the internet. This affected streaming services too. I saw people were having issues with Crunchyroll. I saw people were having issues with Hulu. So many people have moved their entire life from the physical to the digital world. And that has its pros, but it also has so many downsides as well. We definitely should not be going all in on a digital life. If you were all in on the digital world before today, then I guess you experienced your first dose of boredom in a long while because you wouldn't have had access to play your online games. You wouldn't have had access to stream. You wouldn't be able to go on Reddit and scroll around. You might not even be able to get out any money from your bank if you were at Wealth Simple so you could go buy something. You very well could have been left out in the cold and that is not a good place to be. So folks, I think with this whole situation today with AWS, I think we should look at this as a wake-up call. Convenience is obviously very convenient, but it makes us dependent. It comes 
comes at a cost. That is why for a while now, I've been trying to decentralize my approach to technology, whether that be with the tools that I actually use. And if you wanna see a video about that, I'll link it above, but also with the way that I approach the internet as a whole. For me, downloading entire sites so I can access them offline has become important. So too has been curating my media collection, both digital and physical, so that I'm not relying on an internet connection or a subscription to get it. With video games, I definitely do not rely on an internet connection. I just made a video about how I built a game console out of a Raspberry Pi, which I will link above too. And I keep some cash on hand as well for moments like this, where I might not be able to access my currency because of an online issue. In the future, I wanna focus a lot more on this channel about free and open source software, FOSS, or even self-hosting your own website. Even though we are well on our way to Web 3.0, I don't know if we're actually there yet or not, but. I think that there's a lot from web 1.0 that we shouldn't be leaving in the dust. And I think that this today with AWS is a bit of a lesson in that. I think if there's one thing I can say to sum this whole Amazon Web Services thing up is that we've simply given too much power to too few people. So I think this is the time folks to start thinking about decentralized tech, open source technology at that, and stop thinking that just because it's in the cloud, it means that it's someone else's problem. Because the more power that we give to the internet, the more of ourselves we tie into it and the fewer companies that we let handle it, the more that this is going to affect us down the line. I think that Amazon just proved that they and a very few companies around them have the switch to our internet. And if they want to, they can switch it off. And folks, that's not the world that I wanna live in and that's not the internet that I wanna use either. That's just about it for today, guys. This is just kind of my raw feelings, just the things that I was thinking about today with this Amazon outage. What do you think this means? What did this mean to you? Do you think this had any implications to you about the centralized systems that we're facing with our internet today? I'd love to hear from you in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.